This summer in Oklahoma, starting in about March of 2019 and until present day, we saw a sequence of pulses that were uh, localized in time and widespread across the entire state that were picked up on a wide array of receivers. So after we initially assumed that the source could have been aircraft, we started making phone calls to local Air Force bases. These Air Force bases stated that they had no aircraft in the area at the time. That's when we started wondering if there was some sort of explosive source. So I looked at another industrial accident that occurred in Pennsylvania earlier this year in which Philadelphia Energy Solutions uh, suffered a catastrophic explosion of one of their facilities. Some of the basic characteristics of the waveforms, that is how the ground move and how the air moves, were represented in the Oklahoma data set just as they were in the Philadelphia data set. However, some of the features did not match, so we assumed then that the source must have been driven by an airborne explosion. So we started making phone calls to different army bases, and we found that there was one of the largest ammunition disposal plants in the entire United States right there in Oklahoma. When uh, the military removes old munitions, that is uh, munitions that are no longer in service, they tend to sequentially detonate these uh, munitions in a series of explosions that can then be recorded acoustically and seismically as distinct pulses. One of our greatest remaining challenges is detecting small underground nuclear explosions when there is a noisy signal environment that generates earthquakes and above ground harmless explosions like those conducted at McAllister Ammunition Plant from those dangerous tests that we want to really zero in on.